Just one big story, isn't it? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Story Connection. I'm your host, Donna Wilberg. Today we are talking about at-risk kids with former Oakland Raider quarterback and author Greg Roslier. Did I say it right? You did. Oh, good. That's good. Thanks. <laughs> it's so good to have you on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. And I love what you're doing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a combination of sports mm -hmm. and getting to work with kids, and that's probably more fun than I ought to be allowed to have. But, <laughs> so it's not a great deal of a stretch, but, but thank you. Well, how did you start out getting involved with, with at-risk youths? It, it, it actually, uh, completely by accident. Um, I'm uh, vocationally, I was uh, in the private world, and I, uh, I got backed into coaching uh, high school football. Had been away for years and years, and got backed into coaching high school football, and uh, quickly was in the inner city. Mm. And we had kids, literally, Donna, that were li living in cars, and living oh. in hotels uh, right here in Oak Park, mm -hmm. and were hanging on by a, by a thread. And the only reason that they were in school is because they wanted to play football. Okay. So as a coach, we quickly realized that we had to do more than just coach them uh, during the season in order for them to have a chance. So we, we very loosely, loosely, formed a mentoring group. Uh, each coach would take four or five kids and it started with just literally making sure that they survived the weekend. Oh, wow. And then from there, um, trying to help them academically. Uh, and then we, we evolved a bit into them serving into the, in the community and just developing a relationship with them where they would trust us mm -hmm. uh, the, and, and creating lasting relationships. So that's where it that's where it began, mm -hmm. and then over time, um, we we have learned and grown and evolved in, into uh, after-school um, mentoring programs year-round with elementary school kids, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, and we use sports as the as the conduit or the glue to hold the thing together. That's terrific, and what a rewarding plight, right? You've, it's got to make you feel really good, especially, you know, and you're the unsung heroes. You know, you know these things exist, and a lot of people say, oh, isn't that a shame? But there's people like you that are actually out there doing something about it, and, you know, I totally commend you for that. Well, thank you very much, and it yeah. is very rewarding, uh -huh. very rewarding. Uh, there's times where it breaks your heart. Mm -hmm. um, you go to funerals, oh. and that's the part that's not rewarding, yeah. and, you, and you ask yourself why and what can we be doing more, and then... You see some of the things that work on the other end, and and it is very war rewarding and gratifying. Well, you you went from working with the high school kids. Did you sort of like backtrack and try to catch these kids at a younger age and sort of mentor them from from there? It, it, exactly. Okay. Um, we realized um, we started with high school kids, and we've got wonderful relationships with kids that we started with years ago because. Mm -hmm. Part of being a playmaker, our mentoring organization, is you're a playmaker forever. Mm -hmm. And you have a pay it forward responsibility to mentor, come back and mentor a younger kid. So that began with our high school kids, but we realized if we were gonna have a longer lasting effect, we had to get to the kids at a, at a younger age. Yeah. So we, uh, so we developed a, a program for after school um, elementary school kids, grades three through six, both boys and girls, mm -hmm. and it goes 12 months out of the year. And what kind of sports 
are incorporated into these programs? Well, we uh, certainly besides football. Uh, besides, <laughs> bes is there any other sport? <laughs> well. Yeah, besides football, um, particularly with the young kids, and particular because we've got boys and girls, mm -hmm. um, you develop uh, you know generic recreational sports. The kids play. We play kickball. We play. Uh, we play soccer. We play. Uh, we play games that the kids actually invent themselves, which the the sports and recreation part is one of uh, three components. Mm -hmm. The first and foremost being character development, where we're teaching the kids core values mm -hmm. um, that oftentimes that's uh, an entirely new concept. Uh, and then as well as that, reading, uh, because uh, I'll give you a couple of statistics. I okay. could bore you to death with statistics, <laughs> but no, I won't. No. <laughs> Here's two that you can just begin to get your, your head around. In our country, a third of the kids in our country today are being raised by a single mom. Mm. And that's across the board. In our country, less than 60% of our kids read at grade level um, in, our, in our country. Now we work in the war zone, right. so you can imagine what, those, what happens with those statistics. Yes. So if you take the combination of uh, a kid who's being raised by a single mom who's doing the best that she can, no consistent male uh, in the in the picture, mm -hmm. and the fact that they can't read. If you if you take those two statistics and pile them together, you can just about imagine what comes out on the other end. Yes. So, so the three part mentoring component is one: we just have to show up consistently. So that they understand that there's a that there's a man um, that they can trust that will stay in their life for uh, for a consistent period of time. There's the mentoring component mm -hmm. that we have to get them caught up re in reading. Third grade is the critical reading level. Okay. Up to third grade, kids are reading green eggs and ham, mm -hmm. uh, and in third grade they test them, and if they are not at grade level. In the third grade, they have to be caught up or else they can't do their homework because they can't read in order to do their homework. So we have an accelerated program to try to get them caught up with reading and understand these are the toughest kids on campus. Yeah. So you can about imagine how interested they are in reading to begin with or how interested they are in structure and discipline. Mm -hmm. So those are two of the three. And then we add our sports and recreation component to them to it to get kids to exercise uh, and so that they can have a little bit of fun. So those are the three critical areas uh, that we combine uh, into being a very unique after school program. Well, it sounds like you're having great success with this. And we have, we have a, a clip to show that um, is on your website, but we're gonna show it right here on Story Connection because it talks about core values and that's so valuable and you're catching it at an age where it's, it's bound to make a difference, right? Great. Okay, well, let's take a look. Xavier, but you can call me x ray food. A value is something that is very important to you. A value means a value means something to you is very, 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 very important. Character is doing the right thing when nobody's watching. A mentor is doing so, is is a person who who play, who played basketball and teach you how to play basketball or football. They make the playmaker values are. Uh, academics, family, serving others, and winning with honor. Serving others means if they if they're having a hard time, you help you help them with their with their stuff, or if, or if they need help. Good character means when you're not messing around. And you're not talking. Yeah, and you're not talking when the coach is talking, and you be quiet when the when the coach tells you to be quiet. My favorite thing about playing with kids is coming here to do to practice and play football. Yeah. 
seven. How, because you're in such such an area where where there's there's probably a conglomeration of different ethnic backgrounds and different social backgrounds and and whatnot. What what kind of results are you getting as far as the connection between the kids and their parents? Well, interestingly enough, now this isn't always the case, but in most instances we're working uh, with with a, a family unit okay. where, there, where there's not a dad in the picture, mm -hmm. may or may not be a boyfriend, there may or not, you can about imagine yeah. what the situation mm -hmm. is. The, the interesting thing that we found is as we developed a relationship with the kids, um, it also was a relationship with whatever uh, family unit was there as well. It might be mom, it might be grandma, it might be auntie, but they over time will trust us and allow us into the family unit um, if you will, if you will go to where they are. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means that there's times where you're having dinner in Oak Park or there's times where you're having dinner in a place that uh, that may not be your first choice. Mm -hmm. We take kids home, Donna, this, this is the truth. We take high school kids home that need a ride after practice. Okay. And they will say to us, coach, do not drive down this street without me. Oh. You, you're, you're, you're not allowed down this street unless I'm with you. Mm. Um, so those are, those are some of the neighborhoods that we're working in. But, but not only are we developing a relationship with the child, but we're also developing a relationship with that family, and that's equally as important. What drives you to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, there there has to be there has to be a fear factor, you know, not only for you but your your family. You know, they they probably are. I'm sure you get some flack. Well, no, no, no? I really don't. I'm I am absolutely blessed that I have a. Uh, I have a support unit at home uh, that begins with my wife, mm -hmm. who um, who inspires me, um, who gives me all of the freedom and 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 privileges to go do what we do, mm -hmm. and she goes with us. Uh, oh, okay, uh, as that's well, wonderful. As well as uh, I have a daughter that um, you know we're we're blessed and privileged, mm -hmm. and and it was part of her growing uh, to go and become involved and see kids of. Uh, of different color and different uh, privilege, mm -hmm. and so so I'm very lucky. I've yeah. got a, I've got a support unit yeah. that, that I was I was thinking about the fear factor. Yeah. You know, that, you know that that's that's got to be a little tense sometimes. But you know, that's fabulous that you continue to do this and you continue to be a presence in these kids' lives. That's, that's well, Donna, well, thank you. But Donna, if you if if we really look deeply, we have a we has we have a problem uh, of epidemic proportion. I mean, the the uh, the guest that you had on before, who I just was fascinated with, Aaron Christopher, Aaron just yes. sitting and listening to to the role that he's playing, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 the stories that that he has. We have an epidemic, and and we can either. Um, we can either pretend that it doesn't exist or pretend it's not in our, in our neighborhood, but but it's not improving. It's going the wrong direction. So we have to get involved. I happen to believe, this is my crazy notion, that a coach is, is one of the most influential people in the community. A coach um, moves sports aside. Uh, a coach is one of the most influential people in the community that can make a difference um, at, at a depth even beyond what our, uh, what our churches can do. I, you know, my pastor coaches freshman football and mm -hmm. he says, I'm absolutely sure that I have more impact and influence in the community coaching freshman football than I do a congregation of, of 800. Um, and, and so if, if you look at, uh, I just believe coaches um, who are positioned throughout the community, if they will, if they will take up the charge in addition to their sport mm -hmm. of mentoring at a at a level that's on steroids, make a lifetime commitment. 
I just, I just believe that we have a chance of changing the trajectory uh, of this fatherless society until dads come home. I agree. And I think it, you know, the dynamics of, you know, if you think about sports, what it is, you know, you're, you're getting a team. Teamwork is, is so essential to life. And I'm sure, you know, once you, you get everybody on the team to, to you know, cooperate and, and, and do things that are beneficial for the team, you know, there's got to be a really uh, wonderful outcome to that. Well, and, and one of the many discoveries that we've had is certainly this began around sports teams. Mm -hmm. But as, we, as we've started our after school programs, uh, we're finding that this not only attracts kids that are interested in sports, but we've got some surprises where it's attracted kids that you wouldn't think are interested in sports. We have a we have a, a little girl in, in third grade who's just come over from China. She she can't even speak our language, doesn't know any sports. Um, she's extremely introverted and got involved in our program and the first day she stood on the soccer field and cried during the during the sports component. Uh -huh and cried because she had no idea what she was doing, couldn't speak the language, and you go three weeks later, and she's laughing and learning to play oh, soccer. Oh, nice. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and the point is, it's kids that, that you wouldn't think are going to be attracted to sports, but what they're attracted to is team, and they're attracted, which to me is another word for family. Mm -hmm. So they're just attracted to wanting to be part of something that they can count on. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Let's talk about the show that you're putting together so that you can you can <laughs> expound on this adventure you're on. Well, thank you. Um, it, it's, um, so what we're up to there is um, it, our kids get an opportunity to do some things that they wouldn't otherwise even remotely have a chance of doing. Okay. Uh, so that's if you ask what's the what's the secret ingredient of playmakers? It's providing them. It's a couple of things, but it's it's providing them an opportunity, a reward, to do something that they wouldn't otherwise have a chance of doing. So I'm sitting around uh, with, with some really creative people, this wonderful woman named Laura Chick, um, my, my daughter who is, who is, a, uh, who is a, a fledgling actor, and, and we started brainstorming. And we said, what would, a, what would a show look like that's a completely kid-driven show? These are third, fourth, fifth graders that have the opportunity to be on television. Mm -hmm. Wow, that'll be a, that'll be a motivating attract, attraction. Uh -huh. But it's their show. It's not us. Um, it's them having the opportunity to run and do things uh, in, in creative ways, all things that I have no clue because I'm not an arts <laughs> artist, I'm an old football coach. <sighs> um, but the creative juices started flowing and these people went to work and they said, let's get it done. And so, so that's coming and we're in, the, we're in the beginning stages of that and I think it's scheduled to be ready to go somewhere around March or April. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. And what a, what a great... Uh... Uh, team you're going to have with Laura. Oh, I know it. Yeah, I know it. she's amazing. Well, she's a coach, right? She's a, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. She's Absolutely. a coach. Everybody has to listen to Coach Laura. <laughs> so. That'll be fun. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, your book. You have a book. I, <laughs> living proof that anybody you're... can write a book. Okay, <laughs> living proof anybody can write a book. Um, I, I, I wrote a book, um, and, and it's just a, it's, it, it's kind of the story of playmakers. Um, but it was written, it was written for a coach, in a very short because we coaches can only read short things mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, but it was written in a manner of uh, of some things that a coach can do to become a deeper part of a kid's life, uh, in very practical uh, practical terms. It's called Coaching for the Bigger Win, mm -hmm. uh, and and so that one was published. And there's a second one. Uh, that has been written that, that's ready to go now and it's for a single mom how to use uh, and partner with a coach to help raise and and direct your son or daughter on days that it's not easy to do that wow. because um, you know I have a uh, I have a daughter that played competitive sports 
And, and it was really interesting. She would listen and do whatever her coach told her to do, but yet didn't always want to listen to what her dad was telling her to do. Mm -hmm. So, so I thought uh, we're gonna we're gonna write something that that helps a coach and and puts a coach and a mom together so that they can become a team uh, in raising uh, raising a kid today. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. well, it's 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 it was fun. It really was, and I had. Uh, I had a, a wonderful uh, lady by the name of Donna Miesbach who uh, who co-authored it with me and helped me and made sure that all the commas were in the right places <laughs> and all of that. So. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Greg. Yeah. Well, we also, you know, I was watching a, cl a clip on your uh, on your website mm -hmm. that. Uh, Nathan was his name? Oh, Nathan, Nathan. yes. Yeah, so let's talk about the clip, and, and, and I do want the audience to see it, but let's let's talk about Nathan. Okay. How did that all come about? Well, Nathan Nathan is just, I mean, I, when I say an average kid, none of them are average, but uh, Nathan's a kid that got involved in our program. Uh, he was a, a very, very small kid for his age. Mm -hmm. uh, sports was not coming easy for him. And um, he kind of found a home with us, and uh, and I think the clip is uh, is probably Nathan reciting uh, some uh, some uh, some poetry, uh -huh. um, which part of that the neat part of that to me is these kids will learn and memorize in our in our core values segment definitions of values, uh, definitions of character, a poem of deepest fear but they really are beyond their years in what they'll memorize and becomes part of their part of their character DNA. And Nathan's a neat kid uh, that is now in middle school and he's wrestling. He's a three point uh, grade, uh, three point something student uh, and, and just a neat kid. Wow. Well, let's take a look. In the dim light, we could see what Leslie's face breathes into it's mostly queenly pose, the kind of expression she usually reserves, reserves for Vampire's enemies. She didn't want want to kid. Tap him out. He instantly repeated. First down. Good job. Okay, so we've only got a few minutes left. I mean, we've got some time left. Let's talk about. Um, the results. Oh. What kind of results are you getting from all this? <laughs> well, there, there's uh, there's results that are really fun to talk about. Mm -hmm. One of our one of our playmakers uh, is a New England Patriot. Uh, oh one of our one of our playmakers is a uh, plays football for Stanford, um, and those are fun to talk about. Mm -hmm. But it's just the kids that are now doing extraordinary things. We have a. We have an unbelievable young man that pastors a church now in Willows. We have five kids that are serving our country in the military that I'm unbelievably proud of. So those are a smorgasbord um, of, the, uh, of the results that we're getting. This, this kid uh, that's pastoring a church, um, he, uh, I met him when he, was, uh, when he was a freshman in high school. Mm -hmm. He has a very, very light, for, I, it's, I, I'm going to say Down syndrome, it's not Down syndrome, but something along that line. He wanted to play football, and, um, and, so, and, and physically he is not capable of playing football. Yeah. Um, but uh, we assured his mom that we would look after him, and it's the middle of the summer, and he comes to me and he says, Coach, he says, it's 100 and something degrees, and he says, Coach, I think I'm going to quit. It's just too hard. And I have no idea what got me to say this, but I said, Andy, if you quit, I quit. <laughs> and he says, well, coach, you can't quit. You're the, you're, the, you're the coach. And I said, I understand that, but if you quit, I quit. And he said, well, I better not quit. Uh -huh. right, so, so now time warp ahead from his freshman year, he graduates with his degree in seminary studies from Point Loma University and now pastors a church. Oh, wow. Right? So the story now the story the story gets better. Uh, about three about three years ago, um, I got diagnosed with some cancer. It's all good, no problem. Um, and um, I get a phone call from Andy Mirakami, and he says, "Coach, 
just want you to know if you quit, I quit. Oh. <laughs> so, because oh my he gosh. says you're a playmaker forever. Oh. So, so that's uh, so that's one of the success stories. He's probably not going to be. No, he's not going to be in the NFL, but he certainly is. Uh, uh, epitomizes playmakers, and we've had some wonderful corporate support, uh, uh, wonderful individuals, mm -hmm. um, but but corporations. Um, Jim McGran, the the CEO of VSP, um, got involved with us and funded our our camps, and and has gotten because he loves to see the character component. Uh, of what we're doing in, in many local uh, businesses, and as we're spreading out around the country, uh, different uh, different uh, organizations and and uh, individuals are coming on board with this because it's fun yeah. and it's important. Wow. So this is great stuff. <laughs> great stuff. Well, we have to get to the information really quickly because okay. we've only got a uh, minute left. All so right. why don't you tell everybody where they can they can find you? Well, you can find us by going to our website, and it's the playmakers.org theplaymakers.org uh, and you can find us there and you can contact me uh, and all of my information is there and there are so many different places that you can get involved with us from ongoing things to one-time events uh, there, there's just a, a, a plethora of, of areas that you can get involved with us so we invite you to come and be a playmaker Donna, we will make you an honorary playmaker, <laughs> right. except you have to remember you're a playmaker for life and you have to pay it forward. Okay, I love it, right. love it, love it, love it. Well, we're gonna put the information for uh, the Story Connection up at the end, and I wanna thank my wonderful crew for coming out and volunteering their time to make this happen. So with that, um, I think we're gonna say good night. Thank you for having All me. All right, thanks fun. for telling your story. It was wonderful. Thank you. All right, good night, everybody. Connection airs the second and fourth Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our companion show, Paranormal Connection, airs the first and third Thursdays of each month. Each episode repeats the following Friday at 1.30 p.m. and Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Watch these programs online at the same airtimes by going to accesssacramento.org and clicking Watch 17. In the Sacramento region, you can see us on Comcast Channel 17 and on AT&T Channel 99. You can find previously aired shows on the Story Connection YouTube channel. For information on upcoming shows and previous Story Connection guests, go to storyconnectiontv.blogspot.com. You can contact us at storyconnectiontv at gmail.com. And don't forget, find us on Facebook. Become a friend and become a fan. 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 Fan.